talking a lot about the NFL this week. Several times I have mentioned the hatred, the absolute disdain that the mainstream media has towards the NFL. Anything us normal people enjoy, the media wants to destroy. I think it was yesterday I said the media doesn't understand our fascination with the NFL because the media doesn't understand us. Working in the media, it's similar to working in Washington, D.C., Aspiring journalists, they enter into the mainstream media thinking they're going to change the narrative. I'm going to bring the truth back to journalism. I hate to say it, but this is an impossible task. It can't be done. The corruption is so rampant. The lies, the propaganda are so common that after a while, after you're exposed to it for a while, it just all becomes normal. You either conform to your surroundings and become one of them, a shit fuck, or you find another career, or you work at one of the handful of mainstream media outlets that are still committed to reporting the truth. Just like our so-called leaders in Washington, members of the mainstream media are completely out of touch with the average American. In your day-to-day -day life, how often does the issue of racism get brought up? How often does sexuality, gender identity, misogyny, pick your woke boner word, how often do these issues come up? For me personally, the only time I'm exposed to any of these issues is when I'm doing the work here on the channel. And the only reason I'm exposed to it then is because we analyze the media here on the channel. It's all they talk about. These people are obsessed with what they call marginalized groups. If an issue related to one of these groups doesn't present itself organically, they just simply create it. We were given another example of this Thursday afternoon during a press conference with Todd Bowles, head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They tried. They tried to use one of the oldest media tricks, the infamous gotcha question. Several years ago, Samantha B. she hosted a fake White House correspondence dinner on her show. In the seven-year history of Full Fellatio with the Carpenter Bee, this was the only segment they produced that included anything that came close to resembling comedy. Now, of course, Samantha Bee had nothing to do with the humor. The only thing funny about her is the reflection in the mirror when she removes her Kobe mask. Will Ferrell, he made an appearance on the show doing his classic impersonation of George Bush. During the segment, he referenced gotcha questions from the media. Why are we going to war? Gotcha. Why did it take so long to respond to Hurricane Katrina? Gotcha. What happened to WMDs in Iraq? Gotcha. Now sure, these questions were exaggerated. They were meant for purposes of satire, but it wasn't all that far from the truth. The media used to include surprise questions or gotcha questions as a means to finding out the truth for their audience. Today, they use this and other tactics to spread propaganda so they can further their created narrative. Sunday afternoon, the Bucks are playing the Steelers. If you look at the NFL schedule this Sunday, one of the least exciting matchups on the schedule. The Steelers have been god-awful this season. Tom Brady's always interesting, but... I mean, with the talent the Bucks have on the roster, they are nowhere near as good or as dominant as they should be. There are several key issues right now in Tampa, but like I told you guys before the start of the season, I think Tom Brady's divorce is having its expected impact. That doesn't mean it will impact him all season, but I think right now it definitely has through the first five weeks. Now, if you're a beat reporter in Tampa or Pittsburgh, there are a plethora of different angles that you could choose to write about for this game. Hell, I just gave you one, the divorce of Tom Brady and the potential impact it's having on the team. The emergence of Kenny Pickett as the starter in Pittsburgh after Mitchell Trubisky continued his personal tradition of being one of the biggest bums in the NFL. The struggles in Pittsburgh. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time Mike Tomlin's ever started a season one and four. The Steelers have always been known for their defense. Right now, they have one of the worst defenses in the league. But you get the point. As an NFL reporter, there are so many different angles that you could choose that would be interesting to your audience. What was the focus of the media Thursday afternoon during their press conference with Todd Bowles? 
This matchup is legendary! This is unbelievable! It represents progress! Why are more people not talking about this game? For the first time all season, two black head coaches will be opposing each other. Oh, 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 oh. Now that I think about it, this is so, so sad. It's black on black crime. This is why the NFL needs to be abolished. As a society, we must stop pitting black men against each other. Oh! Of all the things to question Todd Bowles about, these out-of-touch shit fucks had to make it all about race. It didn't just happen once. It happened twice from two different reporters. You had your chance to trend on Twitter. It's my turn to excite lonely men with woke boner words. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Todd Bowles. If you're not familiar with him, he's about to earn your respect. Because he took these freshly dropped turds presented to him by the media in the form of their favorite dish, the shit sandwich. Todd Bowles took these freshly dropped turds and turned them into gems. This dude handled it like a pro. Watch for yourself. You, you and Mike Tomlin are two of the few black head coaches in the league. I wonder what your relationship is like with them and your thoughts on Steve Wilkes joining that bowl. I have a very good relationship with Tomlin. Uh, we don't look at what color we are when we coach against each other. We just know each other. I have a lot of very good white friends that coach in this league as well, and I don't think it's a big deal as far as us being coaching against each other. I think it's normal. Wilkes got an opportunity to do a good job. Hopefully he does it. And we coach ball. We don't look at color. But you also understand that representation matters too, right? And that when young aspiring coaches or even football players, they see you guys, you know, they see someone that looks like them, maybe grew up like them, that has to mean something. Well, when you say you see you guys and look like them and grow up like them, it means that we're eyeballs to begin with. And I think the minute you guys start stop making a big deal about it, everybody else will as well. When I was watching this earlier this morning, I thought about another reason the media hates the NFL so much. Imagine just for a second, the same situation was happening in the NBA. Let's say the Sixers are playing the Suns. If Doc Rivers were asked these same questions, how do you think he would have responded? Yes, my fellow shit fuck, representation is so important. I'm glad I can be an example to younger kids. They can follow in my footsteps, enter into adulthood, and realize all the pleasure a cucumber can provide. Coaches and players in the NBA, they feed into the media narrative. Hell, they feed off the media narrative, too. It's not as prevalent in the NFL. They have tried for years to make Mike Tomlin a martyr. He ain't having it. Remember earlier this spring when Raheem Morris was on... I can't remember the podcast. We did a video on it here on the channel, but I can't think of the podcast off the top of my head. The host, they were trying to bait Raheem Morris into agreeing that he wasn't given another head coaching opportunity in the NFL because of his race. He shot that shit down. Just like Todd Bowles shot this shit down on Thursday. Now, you probably noticed... The second question came from a female reporter. Imagine my fucking surprise when I figured out the identity of this identifier and she works at ESPN. Her name is Jenna Lane. She doesn't provide her proper pronouns in her woke dating app bio on Twitter. So potential suitors have no idea if they're swiping on a male birthing person or a female birthing person. However, she does inform potential suitors that her bongo is slightly more durable than Sam Bradford. Jenna Lane wanted to prove to her bosses at ESPN that she is worth every penny in woke welfare that they're paying her. Check out this bullshit. This evil male birthing person, I gave him the perfect setup. He could have became the next big victim. We would have put him on the cover of ESPN magazine. His face would have been seen by handfuls of wanker spankers. Instead, he shot down my woke mating call. Clearly, Todd Bowles is racist. He's not into white birthing persons like myself who possibly identify as female. Just think about this for a second. Here we have a white woman, a woke white woman, whose only experience in the NFL is standing by the jockstrap bin hoping to get a whiff of the aroma. This entitled motherfucker 
wants to lecture Todd Bowles about the importance of race in his upcoming game? What the fuck does race have to do with it? After Jenna Lane received backlash for her bullshit, instead of admitting that she's a huge embarrassing failure, instead of admitting she tried to make this game all about race, she tried to justify her line of questioning. She pulled a clip from a press conference from March 31st, claiming Todd Bowles' response to the questioning Thursday differed from his response back in March. I'm going to let you decide. Watch for yourself. Todd, starting today, you're the public face of, uh, of a franchise that uh, kind of is in the forefront of NFL diversity. How much does that mean to you? It means a lot. You know, being a person of color, you want to get hired off of your ability, you know. But as a kid, to see some people like us in these places and in these jobs, it gives hope to a lot of people. You don't coach for that reason, but being a kid growing up and going around neighborhoods and speaking to people, you understand the impact that it has on their lives. And we just try to be the best coaches we can be going forward. Couple of things here. Number one, Todd Bowles stressed the point that he wanted to be hired for his ability, his qualifications, not his skin color. Number two, the settings are completely different. I don't care if it's March or October. I can't stand it when the media makes anything about race. But asking that question at an introductory press conference back in March and asking the same fucking question three days before a game, that is two different scenarios, two different atmospheres. Not to mention the fact Todd Bowles already answered this question. If he's already answered the question in March, why in the fuck would Jenna Lane ask him again six months later? Like I told you earlier, it's a gotcha question. Jenna Lane was looking for a different response so she could claim her 15 minutes of fame. Look at me, look at me, I tricked Todd Bowles. He answered my loaded question differently than he did six months ago. Please notice me, please notice me, make me famous. I am begging for any attention that I can get. She thought. She thought she would get a positive response by doing this. Instead, she got called out for being a shit fuck. This is why I say the mainstream media is out of touch with the rest of us. No one cares about race. No one. For the vast majority of Americans, skin color is irrelevant. But they have to keep the issue of racism in the mainstream because they have to keep us divided. The problem for the shit fucks, though, People have been alerted to their bullshit. No one is biting into the shit sandwich anymore. Good for Todd Bowles. Compare the reaction to Todd Bowles standing up for himself to the reaction of Troy Aikman bending over to take his punishment. When you stand up to the shit fucks, people will respect you. Give me your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.